In this video, we're going to take a look at the Husqvarna 230IB battery-powered leaf blower. This leaf blower has been available since around the beginning of 2021. Uh, just kind of hit or miss as to where you could get it at because of supply chain issues. And then some of the dealers were still selling through old inventory of the 320IB battery-powered leaf blower from Husqvarna, which the 230IB replaced. Now, if you remember the 320IB, you could buy it as just a bare blower, or you could buy it in a kit with a battery and a charger. Same holds true with the 230IB. You can get just the blower by itself, or you can buy it in a kit with a battery and charger. Now, this does come with a better battery and a better charger than the 320IB. This comes with the uh, 250 watt charger, and it comes with the new BLI 22, which replaced the old BLI 20 which you would have got with that 320IB leaf blower. All of these things in this kit, the charger, the battery, and the leaf blower, are very good upgrades over what came with the 320IB kit. Now, the 320IB leaf blower was still a pretty good leaf blower, so if you've ever used one uh, or know anybody that owns one, you know, you've probably heard some pretty good things about it. The 230IB, though, is even better. So what makes the 230IB better than the 320IB? Because you would think, well, 320IB, that's a higher number. It's got to be a better machine. It's got to be more powerful, right? Eh, not quite. Uh, what makes the 230IB better than the 320IB and what makes it competitive with other battery-powered leaf blowers in its class are some pretty good features. And uh, we'll start with the design of the body of the blower itself. They have the battery at the back. There's an opening where the intake air comes in. Then you have your electric motor, your control unit, and your blower tubes all at the front. The handle where you hold the leaf blower at is a bridge over top of that opening. So the battery, because of the position of it, acts as a counterbalance for all that stuff at the front of the leaf blower. That makes this thing very maneuverable, very agile for the size of it, and is going to make it easier to use for extended periods of time without that wrist fatigue, without that hand fatigue. You know, when you're waving this thing from side to side on your sidewalk, blowing it off, clearing off snow or leaves or whatever, because it's so balanced, or it's balanced so well, I should say, and it's so agile, you're not going to notice it as fast as some of these other leaf blowers where they have the battery and the electric motor right on top of each other and all your weight is in one spot. Then we'll move on to the operator controls. Very basic, very easy to use. Three keys, or sorry, three buttons on the keypad. You have the power button. You push that. When the blower comes on, there's going to be a green LED that will light up. You have your cruise control button. Again, an LED to tell you it's activated. And you have your turbo button. Again, an LED to tell you it's activated. Underneath the handle, you have your trigger, which is going to allow you to control your airspeed. It's variable speed. So. When you squeeze the trigger the whole way, you're at maximum airflow. As you let off of it, it's going to decrease. If you want to set the blower to run at a certain air speed, you know, a certain power, squeeze the trigger until you get to the air speed power that you, uh, you desire. Then you hit the cruise control button and it locks it at that, at that speed. Very easy to do. Um, as far as the turbo. This is one where a lot of people don't understand how this works. So you have the leaf blower running at a certain speed. Then you hit the turbo button. It's going to give it just an extra burst of air. You know, it's going to be faster. It's going to be uh, a larger charge of air coming out of there. And it's going to do that. You got the button pushed down. It's locked in. It's going to do that for a certain amount of time. And then it's going to kick out. And when it does this, a lot of people at first are like, what's wrong with this thing? Why isn't it working? It stopped. It's not, it's not only running at the completely full power nonstop. It's designed to do that. The reason why it's designed to do that is so that you don't run the battery dead as fast. That turbo, really, a lot of times, all you need it for is to just get a big pile or something that's you know, caked down to the sidewalk, moving a little bit, and then you can leave off of it, and the, air, the regular airspeed will just blow it away or keep it moving. So when this kicks out, it's actually doing you a favor because it's going to extend your runtime. And the other thing is when you run these battery-powered leaf blowers just 
full force wide open like that at these high speeds trying to move those high volumes of air and it runs the battery dead real fast like that you're putting a lot of strain on that battery you are you're going to be heating that battery up because you're drawing the power out of it so fast so if you do that if you could do that with this one and you just hold that turbo button down until it runs dead. You got to put the battery on the charger. That battery's going to have to cool down before it's going to take a charge. It's going to be that way with just about every brand of leaf blower out there on the market because it's just the way batteries work. So that is why the turbo button, you push it in, you lock it on, and you'll have that, that bigger charge of air coming out, but it won't do it just continuously nonstop till the thing goes dead. So your leaf blower is not broken. There's not something wrong with it. It's not defective. That's the way it's designed to work. That was the way the 320IB was designed to work. Then out at the end of the blower tube, you're going to find this scraper blade on it. This is something you don't see on any other leaf blowers out there. And a lot of people will look at that and they're like, what is that for? Why is this tube designed that way? Does this cause something special with the air? Or what, what's the reason for this? The reason for it is because sooner or later, <laughs> any of us that are blowing leaves or trying to blow something off of a, a sidewalk or a driveway that doesn't move, we're going to take and poke at it with the blower tube, right? It's just what we do. <laughs> so Husqvarna actually incorporated a scraper into there, into their uh, their blower tube, so that if you have something that's not moving, you could actually scrape at it or prod at it with that uh, scraper blade on the end of the blower tube get it to loosen up and then blow it away you could also use this in the cracks of your sidewalks they'll get packed full of dirt and debris and you can use that to kind of scrape them out and blow the stuff away as you're scraping it out so just a little little extra plastic on there and it makes a world of difference in the performance of this blower and what you can do with it all right so when shopping for a leaf blower most of us shop one of two ways by price or by power right well there are a few of us yet that still shop by most power for the best price. Just looking for a good overall value. The Husqvarna 230IB is going to be a good choice for all three of those types of consumers. And we'll run down the specs here to give you an idea of what you're going to get with this 230IB. The airflow, 650 CFM. Air speed, 136 miles an hour. And the blowing force, 19.4 newtons. That's pretty good. You might understand what those numbers mean, but that is pretty good for a handheld leaf blower, whether it's battery powered or gas. That is, that is some good performance right there. To put this into perspective, I've been talking about the 320 IB. If you remember when the 320 IB was still around, they also had the 436 LIB, which was the commercial version of the 320 IB. They still offer that. It's Design very, very similar to the 320IB. So the performance is really the same, just a few tweaks on the, the uh, operating features between the 436 and the 320IB. Here we have the specs for the 430, uh, 436LIB. Again, this is all coming right from Husqvarna's website. Remember, 650 CFM from the 230IB compared to 388 CFM from that 436 commercial handheld leaf blower. Airspeed 136 to 105. Blowing force 19.4 to 9 newtons. So the 230 IB hands down better performance, better power than the 436 LIB commercial handheld battery powered leaf blower from Husqvarna, which gives you an idea of how much better this thing is compared to the 320 IB. What about backpack leaf blowers? They've got to have more power because they're battery-powered backpack leaf blowers, right? Not necessarily. Take a look. And again, this is all right on the Husqvarna website. You can look this up for yourself. The 230IB handheld leaf blower. 650 CFM compared to 483 from the 340 IBT backpack leaf blower and 452 from the 550 IBTX backpack leaf blower. Airspeed, 136 from the 230 IB compared to 136.45 from the 340 IBT and 120.79 from the 550 IBTX. Blowing force, 
19.4 newtons from the 230IB, 17 newtons from the 340IBT, and 14 newtons from the 550IBTX. So, yeah, the 230IB has better power. It's going to perform better than those backpack leaf blowers. Those backpack leaf blowers are going to run longer because you're using you know, multiple batteries or a larger battery with them. But as far as the blowing performance, you're going to be able to do more with the 230IB. You know, the only, the only category that any of them are close on is the miles per hour. And you're talking 136.01 miles per hour on a 230IB compared to 136.45 from the 340IBT. So less than a half a mile an hour difference. You think you'll be able to notice that when you're using them? I really, really doubt it. Now that CFM, 650 compared to 483 or 452 or 388, you're going to notice a difference there. As far as the blowing force, 19.4 newtons compared to 17 newtons, eh, you might not really notice it there. It all depends. Uh, but 19.4 compared to 14 newtons or 9 newtons, you're going to notice that because that's where it's going to start to push your hand back. You know, <laughs> you get to 19.4 newtons and it's really going to it's really going to push your wrist back compared to 9 newtons. There's definitely going to be a difference there. So again, this is all available right there on the Husqvarna website. You can check that out for yourself. Uh, the 230 IB, we recommend if you're going to buy this thing. Buy it with the buy it in the kit with the battery and the charger because you're going to get a good charger. You're getting an upgraded battery. Now the thing about this battery is it's one of the orange batteries, so it will not work in the commercial equipment. So that 436 LIB, if you go to buy it, it's going to come as just a leaf blower by itself. There's no other way you can buy it. It takes commercial batteries only. You have to use the gray batteries in it. You have to buy them separate. So that package there will cost you a good bit of money because you're going to have to buy a battery, you're going to have to buy a charger, you're going to have to buy that 436 LIB, all buy it, all, all those components individually. So you're going to spend a lot of money and get less performance out of that leaf blower compared to the 230 IB. With the 230 IB, it comes with that orange battery. Like I said, you can't use that orange battery in the commercial powered equipment. But if you have other commercial equipment and you have the gray batteries, you can use the gray batteries in the 230IB. So the gray batteries will work, the commercial batteries will work in that consumer blower, but the consumer battery will not work in the commercial blower. So that's it there. Um, best thing you can do now is just get out there to your local Husqvarna dealer and check out one of these 230IB leaf blowers up close. Give it a try. Pick it up. You know, Feel how well balanced that thing is with the battery in it. And give it a whirl. That's going to do it for this video here. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching.